let's say let's say i have been given a function f of x as a square plus 4x plus 7 plus f square plus x plus 1 and i'm asked to see if this function f of x is 1 1 I have been asked to find. Now, to find this, I, as I said, I will take two elements as x1 and x2, which are different, and I will find out what is f of x1, I will find out f, what is f of x2. Now, since I have taken these two different, if the function is 1, 1, then f of x1 should not be equal to f of x2. So, we will see. If I find that x, if x1 and x2 are different, then 2 f of x1 and f of x2 are same, then the function is not 1 to 1, it is a 91 function. Let us see. Let us see I have taken two elements as x, f of x1 and x2. What is f of x1? It is and this side we get x2 square plus f of x2 plus 7 and denominator I get x2 square plus x2 plus 1. Now, if I simplify this, I will get to 0. Now, one solution is obviously x1 equal to x2. Now, if x1 is equal to x2, then f x x1 has to be equal to f of x2. So, this is one solution. The other solution is 2x1 plus 2x2 plus x1, x2 plus this one is 0. Okay? Now, you see that the function is symmetrical with respect to x1 and x2. Right? You see that in x1 also you have a factor of 2, in x2 also you have a factor of 2 and you have product x1, x2. That means, if I take x1 value as let us say 0, from that case I get x2 equals to minus half for which f of x1 is equal to f of x2. Or if I take x2 equals to 0, and then I will get x1 equal to minus half. In that case, again f of x1 equals to f of x2. So, I have got two cases in which the values of x1 and x2 are different, but f of x1 equal to f of x2. So, this is not a one-to-one -one function, it is a many-one function. Okay. Now, there is another classification which is done in case of functions. That is depending on whether the range is equal to the codomain or not. Now, I had said that when you have a function, you have two sets as x and y and this y could have let any number of elements, it can have 15 elements, 20 elements, it can have any number of elements and the number of all the elements in the in the set y are called the in the codomain and only few element lies in the range. So, range in general is a subset of codomain. Now, a function is an onto function if, if the range is equal to the codomain. What that means is, if I take any element in set y, if I take any element in set y, it should have a pre-image in set x. That means, in other words, all the elements of set x covers all the elements in set y as an its image, right? That is what an onto function is, range equals to codomain. If range is not equal to codomain, it is an into function, okay? Now, onto function are also called surjective functions. So, we had the classification, first classification as 1 to 1 and many to 1 depending on how the image was decided and then other classification is on on to and into functions depending on what the range is. Now, a function which is both 1 1 and on to is known as a bijective function. By means 2, so it satisfies two properties which is surjective and injective, so it is called a bijective function. Okay. Let us see an example. Let us say I have 
a function f the range is r the codomain is r and the function is sin of x so is this function a onto function or an into function in this case, you see that sine of x lies between minus 1 to 1. So, obviously, minus 1 to 1 is a proper subset of the set of real numbers. So, it's an into function. Let's say I take a polynomial f of x as ax cube plus b. In this case, for any real number, I'll get the value of fx as another real number. So, this range covers all the real numbers. So, range is equal to codomain. So, it is an onto function. Now, to find whether the function is into or onto, what we do is we find the range and we compare the range with the codomain. If both of them are same, then it is an onto function. If both of them are not same, then it is an into function. Now, we now move on to very important function that is called inverse function. This is very important, you need to understand this properly. Inverse function. Again, we move on to our basic sets. Let's say I have two sets, x and y. And I have a rule f. Right, as a rule f. The condition for inverse function is that your normal function f should be one to one, and it should be on two. We will see why this condition should be there. Let's say I have this function. Now, looking from this side. Looking from this side, if I am a viewer from this side, at this function, I, I apply this rule f and I get an image in this case. Now, inverse function means I am a viewer from this side now and using it's as this element as the domain. Think this now, first case I had this as the domain, but now I am a viewer from this side. I will have this as my domain, these elements, the range as my domain, you can say. And I'll apply a rule G such that I get this elements as the range. So basically, we are interchanging the domain and range. The domain of F becomes the range of G. The range of F becomes the domain of G. Okay. So G is basically we write it as F inverse. Now, for G to be a function, you know that all the elements in this set should have an image, right? All the elements in this uh, should have an image. That means if all the elements in Y has an image, that means the function is basically an onto function. Because unless it is an onto function, range is not equal to codomain. We want the range to be equal to codomain so that each of the elements has an image in this side. So the range should be equal to codomain and this has to be an onto function. It has to be 1, 1 because if I have something like this, then if I look from this side, then this element has two images. Then G can't be a function. So I have to have 1 to 1 also. So these are the two prerequisites to find the inverse of a function. And we write the inverse as G of equals to F of F inverse. So first of all, if I have a function, I have to see whether it's invertible or not. If it's invertible, we have to find, we can find the inverse of that function. And okay. Now, in cases like let's say, let's say in this case, in this case, you see, let's say I have something like this. I have been given a function f which has an image like this, and I'm asked to find g of x. In this case, I know that this is a domain, this is the range. In this case, I know that the function is as usual, not interval, invertible. Let's say, uh, first of all, First of all, I had the domain of as x, the range as again as r. First of all, I know that this function is not invertible, but but if I restrict the domain of 
x to let's say r minus this element then this element is not in the domain now this can be inverted so in cases where this is not inter invertible we we somehow manipulate the domain and range so that we can find an inverse function we'll see that how we do this